food here. And I, we've had some people up since 4.30 cooking some biscuits and, and, and preparing and getting things set up, and I appreciate them. And just want to thank everybody for being here this morning. And uh, I tell you, the Lord always shows up in this park. I have watched miracle after miracle happen in this park. With uh, I'm watching Barbara just talk with a young lady, and, and she came to Christ. And, and I love coming to this park because this is a picture of our community where we live. It's uh, and, but this morning we need to just find and just thank the Lord for what He's doing and, and what He has done. And Jesus is alive. I'm gonna bring John up here in just a second. He's gonna lead us in a couple of. of, of songs and it's a blessing because we got a couple more people that are coming that are getting to come with us i'm waiting on john to get ready good morning come on in i come on in like we got a building right <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got, we got a building we about three thousand in this field so uh, y'all more than welcome to have a seat i'm good Hey, young lady. <laughs> hey, young man. <laughs> Let me open up with a word of prayer. And um, we'll get started. If I could uh, remind myself to put my phone on vibrate because you never know. Your phone's going to start ringing when we start praising, right? Mine's in the, in the trunk. Car. I hear you, girl. Leave back now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you, God. Thank you here this morning, Lord, our brothers and sisters that have um, come out this morning. God, we thank you for this beautiful day. And Lord, we thank you for this temperature. <laughs> and it, it can be a lot colder. Yeah. But Father, we just want to praise you and thank you because it is what it is, and that's what you have a reason for it. So Lord, this morning as we come and we thank you for your son Jesus, we thank you for what he's done for us, how he laid his life down for us, Lord, and rose again. God, we just want to ask you to come and lead us this morning, Lord. Father, we, we ask your spirit to guide us this morning, Lord. Heavenly Father, that, that you would um, move in a mighty way here in the park. God, we pray for every home all through this area, Lord, that you would touch hearts. God, people that's called this morning and said they just can't come out. Lord, I just pray that you'd touch their heart. I pray that the Spirit would, would dwell up and down these streets in the home, watching over the, the, the moms and the dads and the kids. So, God, would you be with us this morning? Lord, we just want to just thank you, and we just want to give you praise and, and honor. We thank you for what you're doing. We pray all this in your precious Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. John's about. We tone deaf anyway, John. Come on. <laughs> Barbara. Try to play this thing. Well, it's cold out here. You try to play it with the cold finger? Yeah, I was going to say our fingers sit? okay. Yeah, Whatever you feel good. Everybody doing all right? Yes, sir. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, poor Megan. <laughs> Y'all can sing with me if you like it. The splendor of the king.
Do, um... Yeah, if I can see it, y'all give me a <laughs> old man. Oh, here they go, glasses. Pay the price for me and 
want to, um, is everybody cold? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nah, we're not cold. <laughs> One by the Spirit. Um, I asked God to put something on my heart all week. I, I generally start praying. I, I don't get to, to, to preach that often, so I, I just start talking to God and say, God, put on my heart what you want me to share. And over the past couple of weeks, through my walk, through just living life through the Spirit, talking to me, he wants me to talk to you this morning, here on Easter morning, about distraction. Because it really just got placed upon my heart here a few days ago. You know, Jesus came to earth in flesh with emotions to be tempted. What if he would have gotten distracted? Luke 22 all the way to 23, 24 chapters. It's talking about Jesus and in the start of his, his ministry, his calling of his disciples, his walking with the disciples and performing miracle after miracle. But through all of that, on his journey, he never got distracted. He would continue because he knew he had a greater purpose. And then as he was um, arrested and tried, handed over to Pilate, crucified and beaten. You know, I'm just thinking, the weight of that cross on his shoulders as he carried it down the street and the people that, that cheered, the same people that maybe had come and asked him to, to heal someone or to do something for them, it would have been really easy to get distracted. As they hung him on a cross in between two common criminals, he still wanted to lay down his life for us. It would have been really easy to get distracted. But he had a greater purpose. As he defeated death and sin, and rose again three days later. He knew that he still had a purpose. He, he had defeated sin. And he had paid a price that we could not pay. Each person here this morning. God sent his son to die and to pay a price that we couldn't pay. And that's exciting to me. So I want to read to you a little bit. Luke 24. through 49. Excuse me, my hands are cold too a little bit. It says, then... Starting with verse 45, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He also said to them, this is what is written, the Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day, and repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And look, I am sending you what my father promised. As for you, stay in the city until you are empowered from on high. Now I want to speak to two groups here. There's, there's one group that may not um, have ever asked Christ into their heart, that may not have made him Lord of their life. That may be you sitting here this morning, and that's okay. We've all been there before. But then I'm going to talk to a group who, who has asked Christ to come into their heart and, and, and have a relationship with Him. And through Him, have a relationship to the Father. And what is our calling if we've done that? So, it kind of took me back to Matthew chapter 4, 8 and 10. When Jesus was fixing to start his ministry 
as he was wanting to go out, he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, and he fasted. <clears throat> Satan tempted him. Let me, let me tell you what he did. It says, um, I'm going to read just a little bit more. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness and to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But he answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The first temptation. Then the devil took him into the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus told him, It is also written, Do not test the Lord your God. Then, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor and said to him, I will give you all these things if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus told him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And why did I just read that? Believers, I'm speaking to you. From the time that you've asked Christ into your heart and made him Lord of your life, you've had a calling in your life. Probably just about that time you've started being tempted by something. You've gotten distracted by something. Because you've got a purpose and a calling that God has placed on your life. But all of a sudden, relationships, jobs, money, lack of it or too much. Your self-esteem. All the things that the enemy wants you to look at that takes you from putting your eyes on the Creator. That's distractions. And my heart is burdened this, this morning that we would all be able to take the distractions out of our lives. Our purpose is to love the Lord God with all of our heart and to go and to share that love with others. So how is it that we continually to get distracted? Well, by this word, what I'm seeing is that every time the tempter would tempt Jesus, he would use God's word to rebuke that. So I ask you, are we in God's word? Are we utilizing the power that the Father has given us through the Holy Spirit that lives in us to be able to come and have understanding? Because he had told them that I will stay here and I will send some, someone to give you understanding. The Holy Spirit has come inside of us. We are to have understanding. Are we getting in this word? Because we're here on Easter morning, on, on a cold morning. I don't think we're here for the biscuits. <laughs> I think we think there's something more than maybe what we're experiencing. Don't hear me wrong. This is not supposed to be legalistic at all. We're in grace. And once you come to Christ, once he's in your heart, you can't be broken from that. You're adopted into his kingdom and you, there you'll stay. But I'm talking about a more fulfilling life, to have peace. Can I get an amen if you want peace in your life? Amen. amen. We all want peace, don't we? But the tempter does not want us to have peace because he wants to distract us because if we get distracted, we will not be able to carry out our purpose. The same way Jesus was carrying out his purpose, we have a purpose. We have a purpose to go and to share the gospel, to go up and down each and every street, to talk with your neighbor, to talk with your co-worker, to share the, the good news of the gospel that there is a way. That you don't have to earn it. It's nothing you have to do. It's freely given to whoever asks for it and to repent of their sins. 
So some examples of distractions. Noise. Do you have noise in your life? If you do, get it out of your life. Negative noise in your life will keep you where you're at. Who's speaking to you? Who's pouring into you? If you got negative voices in your life, get them out of your life. Disorder and confusion is a very good example if you got terrible noise in your life. If, you, if your life's in, in, in shambles and in disorder, there's some negative noise in your life. Our fleshly desires will keep us distracted. How many nights have I went home and turned on the television and started watching something that does not honor God? How many movies maybe have I sat through and halfway through it I'm like, how is this catapulting me into what God wants for me? Get the distractions out of your life. I'm going to read something else in Galatians. Galatians. Oh, 5, 13 through 26. I'm going over a little bit more. Church, hear me on this. If you're not in the church, if you hadn't asked Christ in your heart, hear this because this is important. For you were called to be free. You were called to be free free. God sent his son to give us freedom, not bondage. We don't have chains that chain us down anymore. We're free of that sin. Brothers, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. For the entire law is fulfilled in one statement, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be consumed by one another. I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is against the Spirit, and the Spirit desires what is against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you, <clears throat> so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I think we all can kind of fall into that from time to time. I tell you about these things in advance as I told you before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, we must also follow the Spirit. We must not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. don't need to put each other down. Kids come by our house, Barbara and I, we'll watch them just tear each other to pieces with words. It rips my heart out. Church, it's time for us to take a stand. It's time for us to go and wage war against the sin that tries to ensnare us. You have to consciously, consciously be able to take out of the distraction out of your life. Distraction. See, the tempter, he, he don't want to make it so bad that you'll turn all the way. He just wants to keep you comfortable enough that you'll stay where you're at. So we have to consciously wake up every morning and say, Father, I need to hit my knees. Spirit, cover me. Let me get into your word. 
And when you see your neighbor, the person that's done, done made you upset or made you mad, or the, or the individual who's done, done talked about you, that is the person you need to be praying for and to be able to love and encourage. Anyone can love their friends. But as a community, as a city, if we all pull for each other by the power of God that lives inside of us, we will change the complexity of the city that we live in. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard. If it was easy, we would all be living in a beautiful garden. But unfortunately, sin came into this world and created havoc. So I want to ask you this morning, do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Or maybe you do, but you've just kind of been going down a path that's been going away from it. I'd ask that you'd pray for maybe the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart to, to repent. It means to turn and walk away from the, the life that you're in right now. Maybe this is a morning that you'd want to come and, and to just rededicate your life. And not just that, but to get some information so that you can have people to come and call you and to pray with you and to pray for you and to encourage you. God loves you. Church, God loves you. He loves all of us. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us. As much as you can think some days by looking at it and say, God, where are you at in all this? He's never left us. So with that, I want to just, I'm going to have John to play one more song and then if, if you'd like to if you'd like to come up and and, and I got a couple pastors here I, maybe they could come up and if you just want to have somebody to pray with you we'd be glad to pray with you and um, after that after we sing this song we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna break camp and we're gonna eat together and I know some people got to go to other worship services they can leave but um, God bless you God loves you Okay? God loves you, Tiffany. He loves you. Let me pray for us and then John will play. God, I thank you, Father. Thank you for your spirit. I pray that you just speak to all of our hearts where we're at, Lord. And Heavenly Father, would you just um, be with us today, God? God, thank you for um, your son, Jesus. Thank you for, for um, sending him, that he laid down his life. He didn't, it wasn't taken from him. And God, we just want to give you praise and thanks that the, that the tomb is empty, that, that he is alive. And, and he's here with us in our hearts, God. So we just love you for all that you're doing. We pray this in your precious son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Child, don't you worry, it's my grace found you when I die. 
walk away from your troubles You can lay them all aside Won't you come and rest in my peace Let me wipe away the tears you cry A couple of announcements. Um, thank you for the team that got up and cooked for us this morning. And um, I guess um, Chef Bags and Ronnie, y'all probably get things going over there to make sure that everybody gets stuff. And um, thank you, John, for coming here from, from Monroe to um, let the Lord use you in, in bringing worship this morning. And um, thank y'all for being here. Thank you, church. Hey, it starts with us. Where are we at with our walk with the Lord? And that's just what God had on my heart person we have um, our own personal walk with him so if you need to speak with anybody even after we get together let's eat and have a good time and i've been smelling that stuff since five this morning <laughs> <laughs> praise god thank y'all for being here